All right, <clears throat> welcome to Doozer Shop. It's a Monday and I'm out in the shop here uh, <clears throat> for a little uh, uh, unboxing video. I honestly don't quite remember what's in this box because I got it on eBay, I got a few things on eBay and I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, <clears throat> so let's get crack a lacking and uh, open this guy up here, okay. There you go. Where's this from? It is from Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Erie, Pennsylvania. Now this was a deal. I hate to tell you what I paid because it was such a decent price. Okay. A little bit of wrapping paper. Oh man. Alright, well. I got it wrapped up some some stuff here. Alright, well. Man, I forget. Good wrap job. I really don't remember what this is. Oh. Righty. So, these are covered with uh, Cosmoline. I think I think this is the same thing, but it's it's in a uh, extrudicated thing. Oh yeah. So check this out. Uh, this is a three quarter well whoop three quarter square. Uh, come on. Three quarter square by five, M2 high speed steel, and you can see it's kind of like uh, a parting tool. I mean, it is sort of a parting tool, but look at that positive rake hook, that upward. Man, I'm sorry, I'm so shaky. Look at that upward angle, right? There you go. So when a tool points up towards the sky, it's positive rake. When it points down, it's negative rake. So this thing's a double-sided double wonder right there. So, uh, man, I look, look at that scoop. Oops, sorry. Anyhow, uh, I want to use that on the, uh, the planer, right? I think I got four of those. Come on. Maybe three. I forget. I think maybe it was three. It could have been three, but jam up right there, eh? Pretty good. Now, look at these crack a lacking things. So, uh, let me strip them out of the uh, Chinese finger handcuffs there. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh my. What in the world? Man. Dude. Wow. All right. We're going to peel. All right. Man, yeah. Let these jokers hit. Let these jokers, eh? Now, this. All right. Let me see here. Uh, my camera work is really bad. Fudge ripple, come on. All right. Is you see that symbol? I think these are Corroda 
maybe. If you guys know what that symbol is, so it's a boring bar, five six, 15 sixteenths to one and a quarter, and each division is two tenths, right? It's got the, uh, the Vernier scale, the old Jacques Vernier. That thing, one division is a lot. Uh, Who did? So it's a uh, main Japan man. All right, and at the bottom, it's got the a a tool bit of Ruski. Kind of see secured with the, uh, the the set screw, and there's your your cutting bit. So this is cool. I think that's a. Uh, it's got a draw bar in the in the back of this. Four Morris taper is what these are. And uh, I bought these for use on the um, the uh, the Pratt and Whitney jig bore. Okay, so set that guy up. All right, there's that one. I guess I'll do the old peel it open like an like an orange or whatever. Man, that's a cool little sake. Now let me do the old. There's that symbol again. Nine sixteenths. Oops. What does that say? 3 sixteenths to 9 sixteenths. And again, uh, you know, 2 tenths. I, I gotta see how this works. Oh, that's, you just twist it. Man, yeah, look at that joker. Boy, that thing's like butter. Man. That thing's just... That thing is like... Oh my God, that's that's just freaking sexy as hell. Does this one twist? Let's see. No, I think you gotta loosen the screw or something. There is a, a screwy Louie on the bottom. All right. So we got them two guys there. We got this bigger size, holy, kielbasa. Now this stuff, this wrap, it's not your average onion bag, I tell you. It's just sort of a... Good lordy. Shoot. Oh. Unedited, folks. Alright. So this guy, inch and a half to two and a sixteenth. Right? Let me just... Doodly do, hold on. I can't tell. Inch and a half, right? Two and a sixteenth. Like I said, I think that's the Kuroda symbol. Made in Japan. Um, this one doesn't turn. I like I said. I think that screwdriver slot is what you gotta loosen. Uh, to turn them, maybe. I don't know. I will have to experiment. So there's that, there's that, there's that. And this one's even bigger yet, right? Ooh, they got wrapped up all patriotistic and like. Patriotistic. Alright. Alright. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mook them, duke them here. Try not to drop any of this on the floor. Ah. All right. Now this dude is two to two and seven eighths. We'll get you. Come on, can you see that? All right, yeah. Two and seven eighths, two to two and seven eighths. And uh, again, sings the the tool bit. Right 
Yeah, right there. Is this his turn? Oh yeah! I'm sure that that's, that's the lock. And you know, I gotta clean these up with uh, Croil or Liquid Wrench or something. So anyhow, can you see? Oh yeah, you guys can see totally. Let me see there. Give me a little sight to behold in there. Man, I am the world's worst camera guy. So there they are, Candlestick Park. Uh, not too bad. So that was just a uh, another uh, quick unboxing video um, of these, uh, you know, there you go. Are these uh, boring heads, boring bars? Could, maybe you guys could tell me what these are, boring heads or boring bars, I'm not sure. And then uh, three of these apparently high rake parting blades or grooving blades. That's like I said, that's the proper way to sharpen uh, a positive rake uh, tool bit. Um, Show you something else really quick. So this thing's kind of neat. That's like a 45 degree angle plate, right? And uh, well, it's just made up of, uh, you know, uh, trying to get you an isometric, diametric, it's just a, a flat plate, and uh, for clamping stuff, you know, damn, I'm the worst cameraman, uh, on an angle. Uh, so, kind of neat if you're going to be, uh, like I said, you can clamp it. Man, you just clamp stuff on it. Uh, this is uh, some kind of fixture that was uh, in the trash dumpster and uh, destined for scrap. So a lot of times in the shop, 45 angle plate is, is pretty handy. Um, it's got bolt-on tabs made out of, uh, it looks like about 5 8 plate, half inch plate. Um, it's kind of nice, kind of handy um, to have. You just kind of sit there in it. Uh, uh. All right. So that's our uh, our score there. Um, I hope to use these, like I said, on the uh, the Pratt and Whitney. Uh, I've got a four Morris taper collet for the uh, the Pratt and Whitney. Um, I've got a lot of collets for the Pratt & Whitney. I mean, I've, I've probably got about 25 of them, which is awesome. Um, I'll probably end up running an ER40 collet chuck uh, adapter, chucky thing, whatever, uh, for most things. But I like bringing it into my world uh, with uh, purchases like this uh, for the shop. Um, I, like I said, I think these are Corota. SIP, SIP made these as well. And I think Corota copied um, SIP because there's some that are almost identical out there on eBay. And they're made by SIP, Society, Jenna Voice, uh, SIP. Um, so these, there's a couple uh, SIP ones, uh, SIP boring bars. Or boring heads or whatever you call these they're, they're kind of gnarled up um, these are in excellent excellent condition they've not rubbed the bore no uh, gotchas or uh, bozos or whatever but uh, so these are really good shape now I'm gonna be honest I'm used to using the offset boring head right that's all I've ever used like the criterion style um, Flynn you know whatever you name it um, and you know I got my Deandria, um, whatever, SA2 or whatever size it is, um, 
which is again a dovetail slide and yada yada yada. But these things, obviously you could go down into a hole with these um, and not just have a boring bar stick out. And I know the other ones you can uh, go down into a hole too if you put the bar out sideways. But these I guess are made that you know they go down in a, a hole that you're you're working on. Um, I've never used these before, this style. Um, so if you guys could tell me the advantage of these, I know the two tenths adjustable uh, verniers on there is just awesome. And all these graduations are uh, roll marked or engraved um, and black enameled or black oxided down in underneath the surface there. Now these things seem to be satin, satin chrome. Um, matte chrome finish or nickel or something, electroless nickel, I don't know. But uh, super happy with these. I gotta make a tool bit for that one. It's just missing a tool bit. They seem thinner than normal. They're not square section. I think they're a shorter rectangular section, but hey, surface grinder will uh, make one up there uh, quick as quick. Um, I think these shanks are pretty pretty hard. To use these in the uh, Giddings and Lewis um, horizontal boring mill, which it's also a four Morse taper, you're supposed to uh, have a, a slot in these for the retention. Um, it's, it, it's a uh, draw key, Davis draw key retention system. Um, If you tap these in with a uh, lead hammer, lead mallet, babbit hammer, will they stay with the side load? Oof, I don't know. See, one thing, old mill cutters had a brown and sharp taper with a tang and no drawbar. Now, Morse taper is about 5 eighths per foot. Brown and sharp taper is about half inch per foot. And from my research, I found the, uh, the brown and sharp taper with the half, half inch taper per foot lock, well, it's a, it's a shallower uh, angle and it locks in a lot harder than the Morse taper. So I guess maybe some of you old guys that you know, know about this stuff could tell me I guess back in the day, end mills had taper shanks, brown and sharp taper shanks, and you, you bab it or lead hammered them into your spindle socket, and they stayed in there without a drawbar. Um, maybe I, I, th that's that. From my reading, that's what I, I come to find out. Now I realize some things that look like end mills are jig bore reamers, um, and they're not meant for side milling. They're just meant for like jig boring or counter boring uh, making a straight hole so yeah because because these are pretty beautiful I don't know if I'd want to use a carbide end mill and mill a, a little intermediate slot in these I could let me practice on a couple um, end mill holders I have first to get my dimensions and get my fit and da 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 I know Josh Topper made a, uh, a cool little uh, Davis uh, draw key uh, so it's not a tapered situation it's actually got uh, an allen screw or a set screw I forget which that uh, locks it in anyhow um, I know I'm kind of rambling about this stuff but I just uh, I was I, I pulled the trigger on these and they, they, they were you know around two hundred dollars with a little more shipping and everything. But I figure around 50 bucks a piece for a boring head, that's pretty sweet. And I got a size range. I've got a set, ho ho. Um, so this covers me down pretty far. Anything smaller than uh, 15 16s here, you know, you really gotta stick a boring bar down in that, I guess, uh, to get it uh, what you want. They make smaller ones. There's a couple SIP ones on uh, eBay right now. But like I say, they're a little bit jungled up uh, for the condition wise. 
Anyhow, enough about that. Yeah, this 45 plate, I, I couldn't let it go in the dumpster. It, it, it's got marks on it. I uh, thought it had planar marks. I think they're grind marks. Yeah, they're not planar marks. They're, uh, they're grinding marks like surface ground. Um, I don't think this was a machine tool fixture. I think it was a measurement inspection fixture, as best I can tell. Um, so, if it's uh, for use in the, uh, the QC department, uh, measurement, uh, whatnot, it's going to be really good. Um, I could get some dimension measurements off this, but uh, maybe I'll do that in a little bit. Um, set some stuff up on the surface plate, whatever. But uh, I just I, I just get excited about this stuff, you know. Um, accessories for the shop to enhance the capability of the shop. These boring bars or boring heads. Again, tell me what you what you guys call them, uh, machinists with some experience with this stuff. Um, let me know what you guys call them. I I mean they're boring heads, but they could be considered boring bars. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, this might be a good project to put on the surface grinder and grind it in a little bit uh, uh, smoother, nicer than it is. It's in good shape, it's just been knocked around, you know. I don't know. Well, this video is getting long. Um, I got another thing coming, an accessory for the Hendy Tool and Gauge Maker lathe uh, that I did not have with it, but um, I found one on eBay at a reasonable price and I did the buy it now. Um, I know, Doozer, when are you going to get the carriage back on the Hendy? Well, soon, because I, uh, I sold the lathe, I sold the 1927 South Bend 9 inch. I sold it to a fella named um, uh, Bradley and he's about two hours away from me. He's seen it on Facebook Marketplace and he, he bought it from me. Um, this dude, he's a pretty cool cat. He's got a line shaft um, shop. He's into uh, knife making. Uh, and he showed me some pictures of his shop. He's got uh, some wood planes displayed up on the wall, on the shelves he's got made up. So uh, maybe he does the woodworking for the handles or scabbards or whatever you call them. But I was so happy to see my Uncle Don's 1927 South Bend 9 inch junior lathe which was in original condition for 1927 the bed was very very good original paint so this guy Bradley uh, uh, got up with me um, and uh, uh, for Thanksgiving he was here in uh, in Charlotte I think he lives in Raleigh anyhow uh, nice guy I probably talked his ear off way too long and uh, you know I'll give him some tooling extra stuff with it da 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 and I think, I think he was 28 years old, so it's nice to connect with a young fella that, you know, on the phone uh, after he called me with the Facebook ad, uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I got a line shaft shop. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah, you're going to be the, the custodian caretaker of this lathe, uh, you know, coming uh, from here on out. I've, I've had it since I was, uh, you know, a kid, way younger. And... Uh, so yeah, update on that South Bend. Yeah. Uh, and he's about two hours away from me. I might uh, cruise up on his, uh, see him on a Saturday or something, check it out. Anyhow, way too long of a video. Sorry about that, but uh, I wanted to share this cool unboxing. Do the shop out.